Oh, yeah. Okay, guys. So, let's see some progress here. So, after several hours, this is what we got so far. You can still see the scribe lines um, of where I need to finish it. But it's getting there. This shit, this 7075 is harder than a coffin nail. I'll tell you that. This stuff is incredibly difficult. My hand also hurts like a bastard, too, because I was sitting here doing that for half the freaking day. And it feels like I've almost made no progress, but I know I have. Now, I did try to file this, and this rod files just like Parmesan cheese. This is a factory Traxxas rod. I mean, you can see I just touched it with a file right there and almost went right through the top of it. Right there. This stuff, on the other hand, what a nightmare. But, geez, I think this this uh, this rod's going to outlast this motor probably bar none. It'll probably freaking outlast the block, the crank, and everything else. It's... Uh, Pretty strong shit, and I've actually had several people asking me, hey, can you make me one? Can you make me one? Well, uh, that's a tough question. I guess if I had a machine shop, then yeah, I probably would. Next question I had uh, on that was, why? Why am I doing this? Why not just go buy one? Uh, simply the fact, the reason is, I don't want to buy one. I want to make one. Uh, because we all know that the Traxxas rods are pretty fragile, and anemic and thin for the size of the engine that they are and we know that they like to break they break here or they break there or they split down the middle and usually with the bottom you can tell when the bearings are starting to go bad because the crank will walk kind of in an eccentric when the rear bearing starts to go out and this will start to hammer the bottom of the case and then bust the bottom of the rod or this will get a bunch of slop and blow it and split it down the middle this is an old style rod so it didn't really have that problem very much but uh, basically just to say that I did it. Now, if you're into the model diesel engines, uh, which some of you in the group or my, what do you call it here, channel are, into those engines, you can't often buy parts for them, any of them. So if you break something or it's worn out when you get it, you have to make your own shit. And we all know that uh, RB Mods no longer makes connecting rods for these engines, the 3.3 or 2.5. And uh, Davis, uh, what's his last name there, passed away. Uh, a couple days, or a couple, sorry, a couple days, a couple years back. So the Davis diesel heavy duty rods are no longer available, which is kind of a bummer, but it's just the way it is. Uh, so a lot of people said, well, can you document how many gallons you get out of it? Well, absolutely, that's the whole idea here, because a lot of people said, oh, it's not going to last, not going to last, not going to last. Well, um, there's no reason why it won't last a good long time. I mean, uh, my Ray Duga. 7M, which is a .42 stroke airplane engine, so it's 7 cc's. It doesn't have any bearings at all. It has just a plane bushing through the engine. It doesn't even have bronze bushings, and it's over 40 years old and still runs. I don't know how many gallons it has on it, but it still runs beautiful. No slop at all. Well, it's getting there. But also, again, I don't know the alloy used. So I would like to document to see how many gallons and high RPM I can get out of a handmade rod, especially with this material, versus one of these. Because these, about the three gallon marks, start to get shitty. They start to get a lot of slop here, a lot of slop here. So, it should be interesting to see what we get out of this. I mean, the Pro 15 with a handmade rod, it's got, oh, just about a gallon so far. And if you hold the piston still inside the engine and you rotate the crank, there's no up and down play. There's no, you know, no slop in it at all. It's, it's almost perfect still. Uh, so that's pretty pretty interesting But eventually when I do have enough cash I'm going to save up and buy myself a drill press and Probably a small lathe if I can find a place in my tiny little place to put one and uh, I'm going to get myself a piece of Phosphor bronze. I'm gonna make some rods. I'm gonna make a master copy and go from that and then actually put bushings in them top and bottom and make them really nice but you can see I mean, obviously, it's far from being done. It wouldn't even fit in the engine like that. But you can see how thin the center is. This is 6 millimeter. You can see they probably get it down to about maybe 3 in the center there. And how thin it is in the top. 
The bottom is actually not too bad. The bottom is pretty, pretty hardy. But, um, yeah, so you can see the side, side thickness versus what it looks like in the front. So I think it should be more than strong enough to handle what a 3.3 can make. Uh, and I am going to be running the uh, Lossy or Lossy uh, 3.4 carburetor on this engine. Someone said, oh, they're the exact same as a, th a normal 3.3 carburetor, and they're not. Burp. Excuse me. The only difference is, well, there's a few. The Lossy 3.4 carburetor has a larger Venturi. The 3.3 and 2.5 carburetors, as we know, are the same. And most 12s actually have a bigger Venturi size, believe it or not. It's kind of pathetic for an engine that size to have a carburetor that tiny. Uh, so the, the uh, 3.4 carburetor has a bigger Venturi. Uh, the needles are better. The high-speed needles better. The low-speed needles are better design. They just seem to tune. I know they're made in the same factory. Like, I get that. I know, I've had tons of people tell me that before. But, um, yeah, made in the same factory, same materials, but a overall better design. And if you do put one of those in a 3.3, it will tune better and perform better and be more stable. Because a lot of people said, man, the 3.3s are a shitty tuning engine. Well, I kind of agree. They're, they don't hold a tune as well as a lot of other engines do, even cheaper engines. Um, like an $80 SH18, for example, those things hold a freaking tune like a Swiss watch. They're a freaking pretty good motor for their, for their price. So, but the 3.3... A decent set of bearings, replace the rod, the pin, and then, and, and, you know, put a decent carb plug and fuel in it. They actually run pretty good for the most part. And if you do your maintenance, they can last quite a while. But, um, you know, one thing I wanted to show you here, is some people said, well, how do you know if the piston's still worn out or any good? Well, when these pistons do get a lot of hours on them, it might be hard to see. See, I'm not moving it in and out, I'm moving it up and down. You can see the wrist pin in there. They start to get slop in there over time. So you can usually get about two, two connecting rods and two wrist pins and a couple sets of bearings before the piston is completely shot. And you'll notice that play, like I said, if you rock the, the connecting rod back and forth and you see the pin moving up and down, you know it's shot. Or getting to that point and what happens is eventually it just keeps getting looser and looser and the piston will just keep hammering itself and eventually those break away the pin bores and the piston and the bottom of the piston falls apart and the rod smacks the sleeve and it's all over. So that's usually where they f uh, fail. These pistons actually used to be, uh, let's see, 2010 roughly is when they changed the design. I think I was showing you guys that before. You can see what the old rod looks like compared to the new one. They put that big gouge up the center. And if you look at the, uh, the new style rod right here, you can see the oil hole. So they they made it really thin in there but these pistons also used to be a lot they used to have a thicker um, pin boss in the center there where the wrist pin goes through the piston it used to be thicker on both sides and uh, a lot stronger and they never really broke it was usually just kind of they just basically wore out they didn't really break apart until tracks just went well shit we're not making enough money that's uh that's weaken them up here a little bit and see what we can break and see how much money people will spend before they get sick of it and go electric but I digress, that's a story for another time. Just wanted to show my progress out of this awful, awful fucking thing here. That's where it, once it came, and you can see how much material was removed off there. So yeah, there's a lot of, lot of grinding, a lot of sanding, a lot of filing, a lot of cuss words and a lot of beer. And that was a Pro 15 rod, that was a Pro 15 rod that worked. This one's okay, I think. This one is not okay, and this one is... I can't remember what was up with this one, I think something was up with it. Or no, I, I broke a drill rod off and one of them and screwed up the pin bore, so... Um, what I'm going to do next time I'm at the machine shop is just, just have them take a bounce on, just whiz this whole piece off and throw it away, and then... I'll be right back to square one again. I'm going to get some more of this stuff too for some other projects and whatnot. I was actually thinking about trying to make my own cylinder head but flat, completely flat, just a big square of aluminum bolted to the top of the engine with some slits cut in it just for fun. 
Uh, so that might be something at a later date. We'll see. Anyways, just dicking around here, but uh, starting to ramble. But as always, guys, thanks for watching, as always, and uh, keep on burning nitro out there. Get creative with your stuff. Cheers.